they said, oh, Harold Sattler, back in the day, they said before he preached, if you'd sit beside him, they said Harold Sattler would be sitting there before he preached saying, spring up, Spring up, old Spring up, old man. Spring up, old man. Spring up, old man. Yes, what was he doing? He understood that if we do it in our mind, it'll not get the job done. But there is something supernatural about the well of every born again believer being stirred up. Let me say this that what you ought to guard with your entire life is that well that God placed on the inside of you. Grieve not the Holy Ghost, quench not the Holy Spirit. That well that lives on the inside of you is a picture and a type of. Of the Holy Ghost of God that lives on the inside. Amen. The position of this well, it's in you. Man, I don't care if I'm in church, in my truck, Man. in Walmart, I don't care where I'm, it don't ask me where I'm at. It's liable to get on me anytime at all. So, I, I must confess. I, other day I was, well, I was going uh, down through Dick's Sporting Goods. I was going to buy a new set of golf clubs. I ain't played it three times, but uh, you know I'm trying to learn how to do it. And, you know that's enough to steal a man's religion. So I'm trying to get close to God at the same time. And uh, I was going. I started thinking about what happened at church that week before. Started thinking about a boy that got saved, but another boy got his life. And before I knew it, I was walking there and going. Shoo, shoo. More tears start running down my eyes. I know people think I was crazy talking to myself. But that well begin to stir. Any of you know what it's like to have a mama whose well would stir up on you? I remember being a little boy. Mama would be washing dishes. And she'd say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. see her. <laughs> Mama, she'd stomp that feet when she started getting... I've never been a little boy and I'd say, Mama, everything all right? she said, say, everything just fine. So. Everything just fine. I, I, I remember growing up in a church with an old lady. She sat on the second row. Her name was Miss Alma. I didn't know much about her. I, I couldn't bring no girlfriends to church because Miss Alma would embarrass me. Because <laughs> Miss Alma had a well that was active. active. <laughs> My daddy, he'd get to preaching the Word of God. That choir would get to singing. It didn't matter if it was their favorite singer. Yes, right. It didn't matter if it was their favorite subject to be preached upon. Right. It didn't matter if it was their family member that was behind the microphone. Uh, Miss Alma didn't come to play politics. She came right. to do her praise. Right. And boy, she'd yeah. sit there and they'd get on that. And my daddy'd get up there hacking and slobbering and preaching. The and Miss Alma, she'd get on that pew and that, that old arthritic can, she'd pull herself up and she'd begin to throw that fist in the right. air. Well, she'd start worshiping God. She didn't have to have no voice, but God help me. I can't tell you how many times Miss Alma, she'd go to praising God, and although she was old in body, that well was as young as it was the day that Jesus put it in her. And before I noticed, she got that old treble hook came out. She'd start walking around that building. She'd say, preach it, white boy, preach it. And she'd start walking around that building. Now, she didn't have no money, lived in a little old trailer. Her old family had already died and gone. But Miss Alma, she didn't have no money. But she was the first one that began to worship God in the service. Miss Alma get happy. And the happier she got, the less she needed the cane. She'd start walking around that room. You say, God heal her? No, it just got dangerous. Because when she started not using the cane, it turned into a weed eater. She'd
takes the big people downtown and she keeps doing all that. <laughs> Mr. Big Pockets ain't going to stay in our church if we let people keep doing that. Uh, yeah. Well, so and so gave Timmy Gray this week. I bet I won't keep him if she keeps on doing that stuff. Let me say this. You keep your money. I keep people that are worship. Yes, sir. No, you are. She'd go to worship, and I remember thinking, why is she going to do that? Man. One day I was riding my bike, she went to holler. And I looked over and I seen that little old house, and I could hear yeah. worshiping God inside yeah. the Yeah. And the Holy Ghost. You ever had God whoop you? Yeah. <laughs> said, leave her alone. Yes, sir. And this I saw, she didn't have nothing. Yeah. House about falling apart. She drove an old rusty escort. She had no friends, had one family that helped her out every now and then. And it was through her that I learned it's not about what you got. It's yeah. about who you got. That's right. Yeah. right? Miss Alma didn't come to church to find God. Yeah. She came to church with God. Yeah. Boy, she get in there in that well. Lord, I can give you every dollar I got. Oh, if I could have Jesus. one more church service with Miss Alma, she was the real deal. Her breed is dying off. Her pedigree is dying off. We've got to raise up another generation that'll quit worrying about what people think. As I did here, I, I, I could have swore I was T.D. Jakes last night preaching. <laughs> Church is filled with this. Everyone is trying to figure out where we got off track. 
Everyone's trying to figure out when did the glory leave? When did all this arrogant, when did all this uh, nauseating pride, when did the, lot, the lack of the glory and all this man worship begin and when did we lose God? And there's two schools of thought. One is that it's the church's fault and that our church is slapped full of lost church members. Amen. I have seen church members get saved, but I do not think therein lies the entire problem. There's another school of thought, and it is that people have had a genuine experience with God. Yes, sir. Right. They came to an altar. They got saved. They gave their lives to God. Jesus implanted the well inside of them. They came up as a born-again new creation. They lived for God for a while. And somewhere along the line, that well that was designed to spring up into everlasting life, somewhere along the line, stopped stirring up. Yes, The Word of God says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Right. The joy is fueled by that well. Therefore, if the well's not stirred, then there's no joy. Therefore, there's no strength. Right. So the opposite happens. We find bitter, angry, mad, discontent, complain about everything. Nothing's ever good enough for me. Church members, and there's no Holy Ghost because you couldn't get to them because Jesus ain't even get to them. Amen. Amen. That's right. People sit in the and the preacher will get blue in the face. The choir will sing everything they can. And you can't even enjoy it because you're sitting there saying, Well, oh, I can't believe she wore that tonight. Right. If it was my kids, I'd beat them blue for acting like that. I was born in this. I, I don't know a lot, but I, I, know, I, know, I know what I'm talking about now. Listen to me. And the thousand things are going on. And instead of eating the manna from heaven, and instead of enjoying the goodness of God, you're worried about a thousand other things. The table's been spread. The power of God's real. The water's flowing freely. But you can't get none because your well has got trash on it. And it's There's nothing worse then being in a service, and here's where our critical spirit comes from, then being in a service and watching over there to somebody getting blessed. Yeah. Yes. And you can't get blessed. Right. So, oh, I've been there. I'm preaching myself right here. I know what it's like. Becky killed me. She, she heard God. They so close, you know, and I'll, I'll look over her and she's just weeping and crying. And I'm like, she's faking it. Because <laughs> it's easier for me to point the finger at her and push away the blame for the real problem. That's what we do. That's what we do. Our Baptist churches are full of it. We don't want to deal with the real issue. My enemy is not another preacher. My greatest enemy is the enemy in me. And instead of dealing with the trash that's on the inside of me, we say, well, he's too charismatic. He, 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 does, he, he, you know, he's all about that. <laughs> he just likes shouting. Old Brother Chris, you know, he's one of them old-timey preachers. He likes everybody shouting and hollering down at his church. You know, that probably's all fake down there. And because that preacher down the road got a bad, mean spirit, instead of dealing with his problems, he points fingers at that church. Right. 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 That church down there is alive. So we're going to keep pushing fingers at them instead of dealing with the real problem. Uh, I, I was a terrible youth pastor. I was the worst one in the world. I was good at the Jesus stuff, but if you lock me in a building at 2 in the morning with a bunch of teenagers, you'll come home and find a bunch of dead youngins in the Jesus. <laughs> I was terrible. I wasn't no good at it. But one thing I found in our group is we want to dress dirt up. We tell them, put your tie this way. Wear your skirt that long. Yeah. I'm all about honesty. Don't go away here from saying something like it. We want to put everything right. We want to say, make your hair this long. Do this, do that, do this, do that. And the whole time, we're dressing up dirt and not dealing with the real problem. Yeah.
dress that up. <laughs> and the problem is, it's not the dress. Did you know, I, I put a tie on. I've come to church. Every, I, I know how to cross my T's and dot my I's. I can make you feel like I'm from First Baptist. Yes, sir. <laughs> and be just as wicked, right. just as carnal, yeah. as right. anything in this world. Amen. Amen. You better watch out because God's got a big broom. Yes. God's sick of this mess I'm preaching on right now. God's sweeping the floor. Because God realized we ain't got long. America's going to hell. And while America's going to hell, God's tired of all this, uh, all this uh, fake stuff. And He wants us to reach this generation. And He's looking for some people that will get real. I'm doing my best to reach a generation without compromising truth. Sure. Amen. 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 That's the best thing, brother. Without compromising truth. Did you know right, you can brother. still reach this generation and have joy and not compromise uh, truth? Yeah. 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 Amen. That's good, brother. Well, you got that, brother. Becky first got married. And uh, I, I love her to death. I always prayed that God would give me a pretty girl. <laughs> I did. I said, Lord Jesus, Lord, give me a pretty girlfriend. I, I did. I, I, boy, as soon as I, you know, I, I put a ring on her finger as soon as I could before she could figure out how crazy I was. And, <laughs> Preacher Brown, you know, we was both, I was in Bible college and her daddy was sister pastor there at the time. And she was raised there. And we started going through marriage counseling. <laughs> and somebody said this. They said, if you can go an entire year and make it through that first year, There'll be no problems at all. You'll make it. Everything's fine. <laughs> that was the philosophy. If you can make it one whole year. I remember thinking, man, I got it going on. I made it in the shade with a glass of lemonade. Everything's good. I got a pretty... Ain't no... Why in the world would I be mad? I done married above my raisins. Why in the world would I ever get mad at that? <laughs> Six months go by, seven months go by, not one big argument. I said, Good. <laughs> what, no, baby? <laughs> one day, a preacher called me in his office. I was working at the church at the time. He said, CT, come in here and sit down. I said, all right. Now, I, you know, we, we, I thought we were going to play small talk, talk about the next church we were going to go to or plan something or do something fun. But then he did something that I, I had never seen him see him last time. He did something I wasn't accustomed to him doing. He said, sit down. I said, all right. He had them glasses on. And he said, we need to have a talk. <laughs> I said, what's up, Red? What, what's going on? Uh, you know, everything all right? We need to go whoop somebody? What's the deal? Everything, you know, what, what's going on? He said, well, son, I, 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 I don't know how to really say this. He said, I'm just going to say it. I've been noticing you and your wife. Been a little late on Sunday mornings. I said, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, I don't pay you to be late. <laughs> he said, I pay you to be on time. Yes, sir. He said, and I, he said, all I can tell you is if you want to keep your job, you need to go home, put your big boy britches on, and get things under control, and be at church all the time. <laughs> from the rib to take care of this. <laughs> I believe in pastoral authority. Whatever the preacher says, that's what we're going to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Preach on that morning. But he had I call her and I use my deep voice. You know how we do when we say it. I need you to come home right now. I need to come home right now. And then we need to have a talk. We need to have a conversation. <coughs> we got to come home right now. We need to have a talk. She said, what are you talking about? I said, we need to have a conversation. 
She said, all right, man. She's all cheery. She's all, you know, cheerleader. You know, she's all, you know, she's, everything's so good. She was working, cutting hair at the time. And she, she came home. Boy, I, before she came, I was walking through that house, that little trailer we was living in at the time. I was trying to keep my mad on. You know, I was trying to stay mad. I, I was walking back and forth through there. And finally, she come through the door. She said, honey, I'm home. I was like, oh, Chris, don't, don't, don't look at her. Don't look at her. She come in there and she threw them arms on around me, preacher. She laid one on me. I'm talking about she put, I, 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 hallelujah, I'm for it. Amen. She laid one on me. She hugged me. She said, I've missed you so much today. She said, I prayed for you today. She said, Did you have a good day? She said, Oh, by the way, what do you want to talk about? Instantly. My mad left. My pride left. I had my skinny jeans on again. She said, you didn't throw me on the bus, did you? I said, no, honey, I didn't. She said, what happened? After we talked about it, she said, honey, she said, I'm so sorry. She said, I'll make it up. She said, whatever I got to do, she said, I'll, I'll, I promise you, I'll be ready Sunday. How many of you ever said this? I don't care if you got to get up at 4 a.m. or 9 a.m. Just be ready to go out <laughs> Barbies don't turn into Barbies in 30 minutes. I can run through the shower and do my little Superman thing and I have to go where I go. Grab a little water out of the trash bag and put it on the hair and I'm gone. Nah, Becky, it is a process. It's a process. I remember Saturday night come by and I said, honey, you're going to be ready. Remember, remember what's going on. we got to be ready in the morning. She said, honey, every, I've already got my outfit picked out. Everything's good. I'll be ready. I promise. <laughs> That's right. That's what I thought was going to happen. Woke her up, she got out of bed, and the process began to make a very long story short. Time began to go by. Am I, am I testifying tonight? Truth. That man in purple looked like he knows what I'm talking about. That, that process begins to go by, and I, I see that clock going by, and I'm like, oh Lord, you said you'd be a very present help in time of trouble. Let your angels come and help us right help us. Well, she, what's this outfit look like? <laughs> I'm like, just put the black with the red and let's go. You know, all that. Then, boy, she, she's a hairstylist, so she thinks she's a walking billboard for her business, so every hair has to be placed just right. Am I telling it right, honey? Am I telling it right? And, boy, she, she back in there, she, she'd get that comb. She'd get that little fine tooth comb, and she'd pull that hair. But, <laughs> And she'd get all that stuff and she'd, she'd lay that thing back right on her head and she'd get them gallons of hairspray and she'd said, put your big boy britches on. I said, it's my do or die. Here we go. And I ran and I said something I shouldn't have said. Next thing I know, 
the first towns and household fight. <laughs> and it was a good one. <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> I'm talking about from that second them pretty blue eyes of hers to red horns <laughs> I'm going somewhere, hang with me. I'm talking about dealing with the real issue. Now, buddy, I won't go into all the details because y'all wouldn't have me preach the next three nights. The rest of you tell. She was mad. I was mad. We got to the car. I flew down the road to get to church. We got to the church and pulled up. She ain't talking to me and I ain't talking to her. We walk into that church. We're walking on the pavement where, you know, you try to pound the ground and let them know you're mad inside of you. <laughs> but there's something about Baptist folk. Come on. The second you take one step from the pavement <laughs> to the church step, yeah. that little cloak comes back on you. <laughs> Be a blessing and a help to them. Yeah. Or just do what everybody else does. Just 
put a cloak on and act yes. like everything's fine, yeah. and the Holy Ghost don't move at all. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I sit there and I look over here and I see a family that I know is fixing to fall apart. Right. I see a kid over here whose mom and daddy finally got him to come to church, and I have to make a decision. Am I going to be right? Or am I going to be right? Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. Preacher begin to pray to open the service now. I reached over and I grabbed Mickey's hand. Tears run down my eyes. I said, baby, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I shouldn't have said that to you. I should have responded better. I'm the high priest of this home. I should have done better. I failed the test. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? The Bible says a soft answer turns away right. Yes. Amen. Amen. She broke. She started crying. She apologized. And before church was even started, me and Becky's have our own little altar call right there on Amen. Amen. The big boy riches may be an old time country philosophy, but it's not always God's philosophy. I'd rather be right with God and right with my wife than I would be right with the old times. Yes, you're right. We made things right. We prayed. I stepped back. Boy, tears were running down my eyes. Becky got up to sing. And from the first breath, the first note she sang, you could feel the Holy Ghost going out. Boy, I began to watch people. Nobody said a word. People started piling up in the altar. I watched that mom and them two babies go pile in that altar and ask God to give them strength. Yeah. I watched that family whose, whose family was falling apart. I watched them come to the altar and the Holy Ghost said, see what I can do if you just stay clean. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. See what I can do if you just keep that trash off your well. Yeah. See what I can do if you'll just let that pride die inside of you. See what I can do if you'll just keep that trash off of your well. And I made a decision that day that I don't ever want to get in behind God's holy pulpit and have trash on my well. The price is too heavy. The price has too much weight. It's not worth it. If America's going to hell, people have real genuine problems. And the only hope in America is old-fashioned Holy Ghost preaching. God help me to not play games. God help me not to cloak my trash. But that I get right before God. I get right before my family. I make restitution and I can preach in demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost of God. Listen to me church and listen to me America. If we've got to get back to holiness we've got to get back to living right and standing right before God not to appease the people not to appease a man but to live right before a Christ holy God. I still believe in holiness. I still believe in living right. I still believe in doing right. story, but it gets your point across. Yes, you say, well, I don't really know about your doctor. Well, what about the story where that man brought that gift to Jesus? Amen. You know, he had the cloak on. He put his cloak on and he, he come to Jesus and laid that gift at his feet, but Jesus can see straight through that cloak. He said, that's nice and all, but go fix things with your brother. Come back, then I'll accept you. Get back. One of the greatest moves of God, I'm done, Jim, if you'll just place it. One of the greatest moves of God I've ever been a part of in my life. I was in my first year of evangelism. I didn't know nobody. Nobody knew me. I was, I was just struggling along, trying to get a few meetings. People had me and Becky come sing. I hardly ever got to preach. And I was just doing the best I knew to do to live for God. I started fasting and praying that God would let me see revival. Amen. I started praying and fasting that God would let me be a part of a revival. Amen. I had, uh, I had an appointment up in the upstate of South Carolina. 
And uh, people started asking me. They started talking about the revival. And every time people would mention that church, they'd say, well, that church used to be on fire. Big, huge, pretty building. The bottom floor would be barely full. That Sunday morning, I went in there and I preached. And God began to move. The altars piled up. Sunday night, I went back to preach again. And I preached along the same vein of this about making things right with God. Making things right with your brother. Forgiven. Because you've been forgiven. Amen. Letting things go because God let things go for you. Right? Preach, I'll never forget my Monday and Tuesday. Wasn't nobody getting saved. No miraculous worship services. But with tears in my eyes, I begged them people to get right with God. And I've seen, I'll never forget this as long as I live, I've seen a, a lady get up and I knew she'd been having problems with her family. And I watched her begin to weep and cry. As she stood up with her cell phone, walked out of that church, and went and called that family member and made things right. I watched people over here that have been gossiping about people over there meet each other in the altar and say, I sure am sorry for saying what I said. Boy, y'all feel that? I sure am sorry for saying what I said about you. I seen jealous choir members that was jealous of the other because the other may get to sing another song they wanted to sing. And they met in the altar and said, it ain't about who gets to do what. It's about God getting the glory. I seen preach, I seen people go up to the pastor and say, Pastor, we've probably been a little negative about you, and we shouldn't have said what we said, and we shouldn't have been so stubborn. Pastor, you're the boss. Well, we're sorry. Please forgive me. Little by little. I can't, I couldn't even put it in the catalog all the things that God did in those couple of days. Wednesday morning, I woke up in the middle of the night. God told me this, as only God can. All I heard was, I'm not done. Amen. You say, you mean God talks to you? Not, not in the audible voice. Yes, sir. But he talks a whole lot louder than that. Right, 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 right. The Bible says my sheep know my voice. I thought, God, I ain't a pastor around here. You can't tell me that. I ain't got that kind of authority. I can't just say, like Nehemiah, I told no man what faith God had put in my heart. And I told God, I said, God, if you'll tell that pastor to keep going, I'll cancel as many meetings as i got to cancel, and I won't leave this town till you say leave. I was hungry for some reason. Right. Right. I went back to bed. About 9.30 that morning, that preacher called me. He said, Brother C.T., he said, God wouldn't let me sleep last night. I barely knew him. That's the first time I'd ever even met him. He said, I know you don't know me well, and I don't know you well. He said, but Brother C.T., so help me. All I could hear from God is he ain't done. I broke. I told that pastor, I said, Preacher, you ain't going to believe. And I told him, and we pulled together. I said, Preacher, I'll make you the promise I made God. As long as God wants to sit in this town and do something, I'll stay here. I'll cancel as many meetings as i got to cancel. I want what God wants. We went back that night, and the power of God felt the same thing kept happening. We thought maybe this might go two extra nights. We went on Thursday. We said, let's go another night. We went Friday. About four or five got saved that night. I said, we said, let's come back Saturday. More people got saved. Word began to spread. We went to church two or three times that Sunday. We went back to church on Monday. Started the thing right back up. By that time, the crowd began to be noise what God was doing. Little parts of that church started filling up. Week one went by. Week two went by. By week three, 30 or 40 people got born again. Week number four come by. The crowd was nearly capacitated the entire bottom section of that building. Week five went by. By that time, week number six came around. There had been 80 or 90 people saved already. I looked up one night. God helped me. They were standing up all along the side of the walls. The balcony was full. The choir was full. They were standing out the back doors wanting a touch from God as God had set up camping. 
that town. It was a manifested real deal move of God like something you had heard about every Saturday night. Them people get around that church. They was fasting. They was praying. They were staying right with God. They were staying right with their friends. And God began to remove those cloaks and get the trash off of their well. And God began to do a work in that town. Amen. Started with 115 people. By week number seven, there was over 850 people every Amen. night Amen. in that building. Amen. By the end of that revival, there was over 100 people that gave their life to Jesus Christ. Amen. To this day, the fires are still burning. Those Carolina rallies, all they are is a birthing of that revival. The camps I've done, uh, we, we do, we do, we, we, we advertise one of them rallies, we just say we're going, and 1,500 teenagers show up. Amen. Just birthed Amen. out of that revival. The flames are still blowing. A genuine move of God. But it didn't start because a good singing group sang good. And it didn't start because a bunch of people learned how to shout real loud. And it didn't start because people learned how to put a cloak on and dress up real well. It started when people came to the altar and said, I'm tired of being fake. I'm tired of covering up my trash. God, I'm tired of not feeling your power. I'm tired of my kids not knowing what the real deal is. I'm tired So God, here's my cloak. Amen. Clean me up. That's it. And you can hear the well start to spring it. Well, God begin to remove that trash. God begin to dig in those hearts. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just Amen. to forgive us Amen. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. God, here I am. I don't know when it got on me. I don't know what I did exactly. All I know is I don't have the joy anymore. My tears have dried up. My joy is gone. I've been a skeptic of everything going on. I complain about everything the preacher does. And nothing's ever good enough for me. God, I don't know how I got this way. I don't know where I got to where I'm at. But God, I've got to have you get the trash off of my well. You know what God will do? Amen. God will start walking through the church. Amen. And when you got a cloak on, everybody thinks everything's all right. God will get down in that well. And that well will be clean. Put a husband and wife where they need to be. God will deal with the teenager. Been living in a little rebellion. You don't like what mom and daddy says? You think they're being mean? But a little teenager come to the altar and say, God, I sure would like it if you get the trash off my way. God, I sure do want them tears back. God, I want to open that Bible and feel the power of God like I did at youth camp at one time. And you lay your cloak on the altar and God will dig that trash. And it's funny how a new attitude will go home. And the problems that used to be there won't be there no more because it wasn't a mom and daddy problem. It was an attitude problem. It's the real issue. Get the cloak off. Say, God, here am I. Let me ask you a question. What kind of trash you got on your well tonight? Who do you need to call to make things right? It might not be making restitution with anybody. It may be just something you've seen against yourself. Maybe that website you keep looking at when everybody else goes to bed. It may be that text message you keep texting that dude you ain't got no business sending a text message to. Why? It might be that Facebook account you got blocked out so nobody can see it and the people you've been talking to on there. I don't know. But ask that woman at the well. Jesus can see straight through the cloak. Can you sing that, Jimmy? I want him to sing his song. There is a river. It flows from deep within. Amen. A 
As sure as I'm standing here, God sent me to Statesville tonight with this word. God can't bless your trash. Yes, sir. Ask God to take that cloak off. Look at them babies. If we don't do something, their generation's not going to see real revival. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's what is important to me. Do I have my own little boy? I want him to see what the real power of God is. I want him to know what the real manifestation of the Holy Ghost of God is. And we don't have time to play games the more. Statesville's going to hell. And God's waiting on some believers to rise up and say, here's my cloak, God. Tired of playing games. God's waiting on you tonight. Saint you. A sound from heaven Like a mighty rushing wind Come on! It's here, Come on! Don't leave with the trash! Come on! Come on, Mama!
you listen real closely, you can hear water running. If you listen real close, why don't you come to this water? Stop! 